Hey there, and welcome to this Astranti Theory Revision video. As you can see from the big title on the screen, we're going to be looking at Pestel analysis today. Now, whether or not you've come across Pestel before or not, it's incredibly important to make sure you revise it as it comes up across a wide range of SEMA syllabi and it comes up at every level of your studies. You'll see it in BA1, you'll see it in E1, E3, P2 and P3. And let's not forget that it's also relevant for your strategic case study exam. So if you're not familiar with it, this will be a really helpful look at Pestel or it'll be a nice refresher. I'm going to quickly pass you over to one of our experienced tutors, Anthony, to take you through the model. So we're going to begin this pesto analysis section with a little story. We're going to bring two devices up on the screen for you. I don't know if you recognize the one on the left. It's a BlackBerry. Now, Blackberries used to be immensely popular. Just to prove how popular they were, their share price was $144 in 2008. However, the lesson of this introductory story is that by 2013, their share price had fallen to six dollars fifty from a hundred and forty four dollars to six dollars fifty how did that happen well it was down to one thing it was down to a lack of adaptation to its changing external environment because at the end of 2000s a new technology came along the smartphone there was also a new way to communicate through social media, through apps on the smartphone. And people stopped emailing as regularly. Now, email was BlackBerry's speciality. And so, suddenly, its speciality was not needed anymore. And it didn't recognize this shift in technological and social changes and by the time they eventually entered the market or by the time it pardon me had eventually entered the market blackberry didn't have a chance because apple and samsung had already cornered it and so hopefully the lesson from this example is that businesses need to retain an awareness of how their business environment is changing not only to survive but to thrive because, of course, BlackBerry didn't survive, but perhaps they could have thrived if they'd seen these changes coming more quickly. Now, the reason we're talking about this is that Pestel analysis helps companies analyze their changing business environment so they can adapt, so they can change and thrive and survive. It is the six key areas that businesses and organizations need to consider so they can remain aware of the current environment as well as take note of any future changes. And these six key areas we've already gone over are political, economic, social, technological, environmental and legal. These are broad macro factors. They're not like the micro environments. They're not related to a specific industry or a company. These are broad factors. You can think of them more as national or international factors. So let's go and pay a little bit more attention or let's go and focus on each factor individually. And we're going to start with the P4 political. And this is to how and to what degree a government intervenes in the economy. And so this is basically all the ways in which a government can impact on a business and the government can intervene in an economy in a number of ways and those interventions will affect an organization and it can be done in a vast number of ways as I've said if we just take tax policy for example let's imagine the government wants to attract businesses to a country then it might set its corporation tax at low levels so corporations want to base their headquarters in that country but it doesn't just stop with tax policy. It can also move on to political stability or even instability or labor laws or foreign trade policies. These are all ways that can impact upon our business. 
governments also obviously hugely influence the health and the education, the rest of the infrastructure of a nation. And of course, that impacts on the country. If we think about education, well, of course, the availability of skilled labour really benefits organisations from that country. And also, government investment plays a major part. If government is investing huge amounts of money in its infrastructure, for example, well then of course that's going to provide work for organisations who can bid for the contracts to carry out that work. So there we go, political factors, how and to what degree does a government intervene in the economy? Or what ways does the government impact on businesses is another way to think about it. OK, let's move on to the economic factors here, because these economic factors have a major impact on how businesses operate and make decisions. And these are factors such as economic growth, interest rates, exchange rates and inflation rates. Let's take interest rates as an example. Well, interest rates affect a firm's cost of capital and so that in turn impacts on the extent to which a business would grow and expand. Whereas exchange rates affect the costs for a business to export goods as well as the amount of supplies they can import from abroad and the price of those goods. Let's scroll down to our next Pestel factor now which is social and these are the cultural and demographic aspects in the population now again these cover quite a wide variety of factors so it may be a nation's attitude to health or the rate of its population growth or its age distribution i.e. does it have an elderly population or does it have a young population as well as society's emphasis on safety so, for example, that may impact on a business because they may have more legislation to ensure that products are safer for their people. Now, these trends in social factors affect the demand for a company's products and how that company operates. And so any change in social factors can create risk for a business. In the UK recently, there's been a big change in people's attitudes towards food. A social trend is that people are looking at vegan food, they're looking at foods with less sugar added into it, and they're looking at food in terms of how far it's come in terms of its air miles and its impact on the environment. And so businesses have had to adapt to offer products that suit these new consumer trends. Even fast food restaurants such as McDonald's now offer really healthy options, whereas before they were famous for just big burgers and chips. And we talked about age distribution. And if we think about an ageing population, well, with an ageing population, it implies that the nation has a smaller and less willing workforce. And that in turn drives up the costs of labour for the organisations. And so that may affect a company's recruitment policy because they then would have to focus on hiring older workers and making the work and the job suitable for an older workforce. So there we go. That's social factors. Let's drop down now to technological factors. And I think we're all aware of what the technological factors may include. They include things such as the internet, the internet, the internet rather, um, automation, rates of change, social media, computer security, all these technological advances that we read about every day in the press and on the internet. Now, organisations have to be aware of these changes, especially of those changes in their industry, so that they can manage the risks involved with the introduction of these new technologies. We just have to think back to our earlier example of Nokia and BlackBerry. These were market leading companies who failed to understand new technological advances. They didn't adapt quickly enough to the technological changes 
and so went from becoming major players, or went from being major players, I should say, to becoming minor players in the industry, which goes to show the consequences, surely, of how high this technological risk can be. Okay, we're going to drop down now to environmental factors. This is the E of Pestel, or it's the second E of Pestel, I should say. And these factors include things such as weather and climate. Now, at Astranti, issues such as weather and climate don't especially affect me. But that's because I'm not in the tourism trade. That's because I'm not a farmer. That's because I'm not involved in insurance. Imagine you're a farmer. Well, then poor growing conditions are going to make a huge impact on a crop yield. And if we think about tourism as well, in the UK, summers, there's a trend of summers getting hotter and encouraging people to stay cation, which means just holidaying in the UK. Well, that's affecting other nations, organisations who cater to British tourists. But it's not just the weather and climate. Society, so it's kind of emerging society factors and environmental factors here, but it's the potential impact of climate change is also an environmental factor and is also affecting how companies operate. It's affecting the products they offer. I spoke early, didn't I, in the social factors that people are becoming aware of the air miles of their food, how far their food has travelled across the world, because that in turn in turn, pardon me, is causing or help causing irreversible climate change. So businesses are having to be aware of this and some businesses are advertising the short distance that their products have come from. So businesses have to be aware to be able to adapt to these changing markets. Environmental risks can also refer to not just the longer term changes such as climate change, but short-term activities, such as if an oil company spills oil in the ocean, well, of course, that's going to have huge problems for the organisation that has done so. They're going to be fined, and also they're going to suffer huge reputational damage. OK, what we're going to do now is move around to the last factor now, and that's legal. And these are all about laws, the varieties of laws that affect how a company operates its costs and the demand for its products. Now, of course, this should go without saying that companies have to be aware of the laws in the territories in which they operate. Otherwise, they may fall foul of them. They may break the laws and that's going to result in fines or damages to their reputation or perhaps even closure to the business. So legal factors are the laws of the territory in which a company operates. And of course, if we've got a multinational corporation, that means obeying the specific laws in each of the territories in which it operates. OK, so there's the theory behind, I should say, the Pestel factors. Thanks for that, Anthony. And thank you for joining us for this quick refresher of the Pestel model. So this video today is just a short extract from a full tuition video. This is our E3, but as I said earlier, you'll find Pestel analysis across many different syllabi. And our full tuition video series are available exclusively as part of Astranti's full courses. The courses will also include a study text, revision notes, hundreds of practice questions with full solutions, and direct support from our brilliant Astranti tutors to make sure you have all the support you need to pass the exam first time. Now, if you aren't already signed up as a member, you can go onto the Astranti website, which is www.astranti.com, and you can sign up to get some free samples of our materials and potentially look at the full courses. And once again, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. We'd really appreciate it if you'd like to like and subscribe to our channel for more theory revision videos for your SEMA exam.